As we saw previously that the test process is context dependent, similarly, software development lifecycle model is also context dependent. That is what we are going to cover in this lecture. The learning objective is to identify reasons why software development lifecycle models must be adapted to the context of project and product characteristics. This is marked as K1, so you just have to remember the points. First, we will see what are the different factors that affect the selection of software development lifecycle models. The answer to that is simple. Software development lifecycle models must be selected and adapted to the context of project and product characteristics. Other than projects and products, we have other factors that also influence selection on software development lifecycle models. That is what we will see next. Most of the factors which we are going to see now are already covered in Chapter 1. Here, I will just quickly go through it. The first factor is product characteristics, such as what product do you want to build. Based on that, you will decide which development model you choose. The next context is project goal and type. The goal of your project will also influence the decision of model selection. After that is business properties. This talks about the kind of resources you have, the type of organization you are working on. Next context is time to market. The product's release schedule can also decide what type of model you choose. Say, if you want to release it early, then you can go for the Agile model, since it's a flexible process. The next context is project context. Just like the product characteristics or goal, this context will also affect your choice of a development model. And finally, you have project and product risk. This is a very important factor. What is the risk associated with your product? Is it safety related or security related? This consideration will also have to be kept in mind when selecting a model. These are all the factors that can influence software development lifecycle model selection in an organization. To achieve the project context or project goal, we can combine test level and test activities, or we can combine two different software development lifecycle models. Now we will go through a few examples to understand this concept. Let's see the first example where we combine test level and test activity to achieve project context. Suppose we have to perform integration testing for a test level, and our testing activity is interoperability testing. We want to combine the two to achieve our project context. So let's take a look at this project context that requires the combination of these test levels and activities. Integration of commercial of the self software product into a large system. This means there are smaller components of the software that will be combined to create the larger system. Or if you have a large system, another company can provide small software for support, which can be integrated into your system. And sometimes, the purchasing team may perform interoperability testing at the system integration level. So, when the team is carrying out the integration testing, they will do the interoperability testing too. Now let's see the second test level and test activity to achieve the project context. Suppose the test level is functional or non-functional testing level and the test activity is operational testing activity. We combine the two for a project context. Here's what that context looks like. We want to do an acceptance level testing. Sometimes functional or non-functional, acceptance and operational testing are combined together during acceptance testing. So to achieve acceptance level testing, we combine the test level and test activities here. 
Let's see the first example where we take a look at how different models are combined. Here we have two models of the software development lifecycle model 1 and model 2. We are not combining test levels and activities here, but two software development models in order to achieve the project goal. Now suppose the project is in the prototype state. Prototype means that it is in the initial or starting stage. For this, you can use the incremental model. Over time, you can develop small features little by little. But if the product is in the development stage, then you want to use the Agile method. This will let you get the product ready to launch into the market as early as possible. But if the product is in the maintenance stage, like when the customer comes back with a defect and you have to correct it, then you use the V model. As you can see, we use different software development lifecycle models to achieve the final project goal. We use the incremental model for the prototype stage, the agile method for the development stage, and V model for the maintenance stage. So you had a single product and different decisions at different levels. Let's see the second example to take a look at how different models are combined to achieve the project goal. Here, you have a single product, but different objects. However, you're still combining different models to achieve the project goal. Suppose a company creates a device, develops a product, and provides service. For each of these objects, they can use separate software development lifecycle models. In order to provide a service, they can choose to use one model. To develop a product, they can use another. And to manufacture a device, they can utilize yet another model. Let's now summarize all the important points we covered in this lecture. First, we covered the different factors which can influence the selection of the software development lifecycle model. And they are product characteristic, project goal or type, business properties, time to market, project context, and project and product risk. After that, we covered to achieve project context or project goal, we can combine test level and test activities, or different software development lifecycle model.